this is the Raw and Radical Woman in the Arts podcast, and I am your host, Maureen Broadbeck. In each episode, we explore the mechanisms of identity, vulnerability, authenticity, empowerment, and social change through conversations with inspiring women who are making history and challenging the status quo in both the art world and in society. We talk about their real-life challenges and celebrate cis and transgender women so that you can be inspired, empowered, take action, and further your critical understanding about what it means to be a woman in the arts. Woman, feminism, a revolutionary catalyzing reformation, radical... Laura Escude is a multifaceted artist based in Los Angeles. She is a violinist, innovator, an avant-garde electronic producer, a performer, a controllerist, a songwriter and a composer. She is also a tech pioneer, a live performer specialist, a playback engineer and a show designer. She's the founder and CEO of a company called Electronic Creatives that designs show for major acts such as Kanye West, Jay-Z, Herbie Hancock, Ariana Grande, The Pentatonics, Miguel, Drake, Harry Styles, The Cirque du Soleil, and American Idol, amongst others. Through her company, she manages entire teams of programmers and playback engineers that tour the world. She does remixes, and she just finished a great one for Andrew Wong's for producer One Sample. She released music under the name Elux and just released her latest EP, Enoughness, under her name. She is also an educator, a mentor, and a woman in the arts. Please welcome her to the show. Hi, Laura. Welcome to the show. Hi, Maureen. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. It's a great pleasure. I'm so happy you can do this conversation. I'm going to jump right in. You are a woman of many talents. You have a multifaceted career where you magnificently brought together your artistry and creativity, tech and well-being. I think this is really fantastic. So you wear many hats. And as a woman, I have always heard that we need to focus on one or two things in business to have a successful uh, life and career, uh, you know, in some way have some kind of success. And this always made me feel a bit awkward and kind of out of place because this is just not me. I love to do many things. I, I'm attracted to doing all these different things. And we always hear the opposite. And yeah, so this is just not who I am. And I think uh, this is not who you are. So um, I was wondering what's your take on this and how do you manage all these different things you do? Mm, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, I have never been able to just focus on one thing, yeah. you know, like, and I, from an early age, was just interested in a lot of different things. And as I got older, I, I realized, okay, well, all these things are related to music mostly, you know, I've had people joke around with me, you know, like, well, the only thing that you're interested in is, is music. So, you know, it's pretty easy to like get you a present or, you know, get you a, uh, something to celebrate you like going to a concert or whatever. But, you know, as I kind of progressed in my career, I realized, well, there are more things than just music that light me up. And yeah. uh, you spoke of the wellness aspect of, of what I've done. And that's really important to me. All the entrepreneurship, everything that I've done with my business has been around music and technology. So um, it's true that I do specialize in many different things, but yeah. I've had, you know, I've been able to get uh, a lot of help in areas that I'm not the best at. And I think that's one of the secrets to my success, especially in recent years is hiring people that are better than me at certain things or their their jam is something that I don't really want to do or not the best at and that has really freed me up to do the things that I I love to do and that's in my highest joy so that's one of the the key things I think for me is and it was scary at first you know it was very scary to um, invest in other people because uh, you don't know if you're going to make the money to be able to pay them every month. And, yep. you yep. know, as an entrepreneur, it's always a challenge, to be honest. But I just I always trust that it's going to work out. And somehow it always does. <laughs> yeah, this trust is beautiful, yeah. actually, because mm -hmm. I feel like when we do different things, we it builds on each other and it feeds each other inspiration and creativity and it brings new ideas and open new doors that we could maybe not see before. Or if we wouldn't do it absolutely when we get out of our own way you know i've heard so many 
friends say, but uh, so no one else can do it as good as me. And I had that thought for years and, I, and it just kept me stuck and it just kept me in the same place. And then when I, once I started realizing, okay, well, maybe they might not do it as well as I can, but this is something that I don't really want to do. Yeah. Or this is not the the best thing for me. I just started to trust that the people that I hired would be able to to handle it. And it worked. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's ups and downs, and this is a whole other conversation. But the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur, and especially during something as massive as uh, this pandemic this yeah. past year, you know, yeah. not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I have a commitment to the people that I hire and, and, and employ and, you know, I, I appreciate them and the, the support that they give me very much. So I'm, we're very loyal to each other. Yeah, wonderful. So you work with high profile artists such as Drake, Kenya West and many more. This requires a lot of self-confidence, self-belief. And we live in societies where many women uh, in the arts lack this self-confidence and this self-belief. And this is often a real stopper. How do you deal with this? Uh, how do you deal with making sure your self-confidence is boosted in those kind of situations where there is also high pressure of creating live shows and, and being there and making sure everything is really, you know, the best quality? And how do you maintain all this self-belief? Mm, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say, yeah, I've always just had it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> what, you know, truthfully, when I first started out touring, especially with Kanye, uh, I didn't have the self-confidence. I was terrified. You know, mm. I was terrified I was going to get fired in every moment. But I think I, I don't know, really, I'm not saying that this is the best way to go about things, but I internalized a lot of my fear and projected confidence on the outside. Uh, now, there's positives and negatives to that. You know, later on down the road, I had a health breakdown, which is a whole other story, and, you know, had to take a look at the way that I was internalizing my my stress. But, you know, no matter what happened, I just tried to keep a cool face outwardly, no matter how I was spoken to or, you know, the situations. Of course, like, I stood up for myself in extreme circumstances, but... I did take a lot of stuff. I did take a lot of a stress from other people. I did just allow myself to be, um, you know, treated in a certain way. And I, I don't necessarily am not proud of that throughout my touring career. You know, people would talk to me, men especially sometimes, and I would have to prove to them that I knew what I was doing. Hmm. So that became a big part of it is just that the proving, the constant like projecting of confidence so that I wouldn't get called out or no one would say anything to me. Yeah. And then if people did say things to me, I kind of, you know, would just accept them and not really like fight back because I wanted to keep my job. You know, now as I'm older and have been in the, the, the game and done this for a longer period of time, I wouldn't necessarily just accept those things. But yeah, I think, yeah. of course, our world has changed. Society's changed since yeah, I started, yeah. you know, doing this many years ago. But it's something that I always work on. You know, I'm constantly working on the self-confidence. It's something that maybe uh, internally doesn't, it's not exactly where it needs to be all the time, but externally i just try to project the confidence so that you know i can just continue working and working in these atmospheres yeah yeah i feel like with years we grow with experience we we gain some wisdom and some you know just because we we went through so many things and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's all, always new surprises and new things but we know what we can do and this is this is really cool in a way to be there you mm. always pushed your creativity and uh, the technical and, and creative boundaries. What did you learn from this conscious or maybe unconscious act of pushing yourself and your skills to the next level? Many things. Um, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, I had a health breakdown five years ago. I was in the hospital from something that I ate and, you know, it really massively changed my life and really caused me to focus on my well-being and my wellness more. And that was important for me to receive that message from whatever you want to call it, the universe, God, my higher self. 
And yeah, I've, I've learned that the most important thing is me being in my highest joy and Mm. the grinding that I did for so many years, the constantly saying yes to everything. uh, I can't do that anymore. Uh, It doesn't work for me. Um, So I do have to be particular about the things that I say yes to, because uh, when I say yes to certain things, I'm saying no to other things. And I found, especially with working with other people, that's how I make my money. Yes. And then my personal projects and my art are really important to me. And those are the things that light me up and bring me joy. So if I don't find time for those in my schedule, then I'm not happy. Hmm. So now I am constantly working on finding more of a balance um, between what I'm giving and what I'm receiving and what I am doing for myself to further my own creativity. Cause you know, if I said yes to everything, I'd be working on other people's projects all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, something that a couple things that I've learned, you know, just to pay attention to, you know, my intuitive hit. Like when I'm in the studio with someone or working with someone, is this, does this feel good? Does this, is this in my highest joy? Is this something that I'm going to continue doing or not? And uh, I just look at everything through the lens of that now. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, because um, you wrote an EP out of this experience you had with your health and mm-hmm. um, an EP called Transmute that reflected, as I read, despair, transformation, introspection and evolution. Mm-hmm. Those beautiful four words, so important. So could you talk about this EP and how it brought you to write it in this major moment in your life, actually? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... After I got sick, I everything changed for me. I realized, okay, I cannot live the way that I had been living. Could not travel incessantly and give my power to other people. And after I kind of started healing a bit more, the you know the words, the the phrases, the the music started coming out for transmute. And uh, I really just wanted, I mean, it was, a, it was a way for me to express how I was transforming. I didn't know how at that time, but I mm-hmm. wanted to just yeah. encapsulate it in musical format and to capture that time period, which was really important for me. And um, yeah, I just really delved into the creation of this this music as a way to heal myself and I have continued to do that. I just released another EP, Enoughness, which is <laughs> related to another health journey uh, that I just recent, more recently went through. And so I really just find that the music is very cathartic for me and as a way to process my feelings and emotions as I'm going through them at that time. Mm. Yeah, so important. like to talk about how you you write your music and and what gears you used and technology is important for you you talk a lot about using technology to unlimit yourself to embrace technology to support expression and to elevate your art your performance mm-hmm. can you tell us what technology represents for you how do you use it and how do you see it yeah i really view technology as a way to help us overcome our limiting beliefs. You know, in other cultures, no one says, well, I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing right now. Yeah. Um, it's just they they sing. And I think it's beautiful. And especially in this American culture here, we were taught, well, oh, you can't sing. Oh, you have a horrible voice. Oh, this or that. I remember, you know, when I was in elementary school, this girl told me that I couldn't act. So I just, after that, I completely stopped acting Mm. (laughs) and I carried that with me, you know, my whole life. I'm a bad actor. 
So for me, technology has been a way to overcome these limiting beliefs because there's all these amazing tools that you can use, especially if you're not maybe the best singer or um, if you're not the best keyboard player or whatever it is, yeah, yeah. there's a way that you can utilize technology to overcome these limiting beliefs about yourself. So I am a big fan of just trying everything that I can get my hands on. I did a lot of, you know, like field recording stuff recently, and I'm using more organic sounds. In the past, I used a lot more electronic sounds, but I feel like I'm moving in a more organic zone now. And yeah, I just um, love to try to put together any kind of disparate things, anything that, that kind of doesn't sound like it would go together, but does, and really put some meaning into my lyrics and words um, as I'm creating as a way to self-soothe, you know, like to just hold myself in a, in a way, just when I listen to this music, it reminds me, you know, especially my newest EP, Enoughness, to love myself. And mm. it, um, the technology allows me to do that because it allows me to have the confidence in a certain cases to, to do that and to be able to just emote and create music that is from a more emotional and pure uh, space. So that's, you know, really how I create is just using the technology to like eke out this emotion that I might not be able to to get out without the um, the help of it. Yeah, yeah. I had a similar experience with singing, actually, when I was in elementary school, I was told I was singing really wrong. And yeah. that stopped me for many years <laughs> to sing. Yeah, I mean, we we're very impressionable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. True. And there's this whole peer pressure that's sometimes hard to to get away with a lot of ways people think or prejudices that are part of the mm. culture so yeah. this is interesting do you feel like as a woman it was more challenging for you i think probably in the touring world that i was in yeah definitely because i didn't have any representation i didn't have any women that were doing these jobs um i didn't have anyone to look to uh, mm -hmm. so that was really challenging for me and you know with my music i really wasn't confident early on um and it took me many years to even release music because i was you know very scared of of putting it out and what what people might think i think that's a common thing is yeah, yeah. worrying so much about what people are going to say or think or they're going to tell me that my voice sounds bad or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but you know, now it's, it's just a repetition and practice. And yeah. if there aren't people that are saying negative things about <laughs> it, then it's maybe not truly art. Right. Cause you know, you can't please everyone. So yeah. Yeah. you have to like, remember <laughs> that not everyone's going to like it. And, and if you do it for yourself and solely for yourself and create what you like, then, you know, it's, it's pure, you know, it's truly yours. Yeah, this is beautiful what you're saying, because I've noticed by talking to many women that it's and, and men also actually that putting out to the world what you do is one of the hardest things. There's mm -hmm. starting it, doing it and then putting it out. Yeah, and this is very, very scary. It's like, a, you know, jumping off an airplane, really. You, mm -hmm. you have to jump in that darkness so this void and you you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> absolutely yeah So you did a conference at the latest uh, Loop Summit in 2008 when it was in L.A. Mm -hmm. It was actually a fantastic edition. I was there. And um, oh, yeah. yeah, you talked about blurring the lines between being an artist and being an entrepreneur. And mm -hmm. um, I think this is very important for women to consider themselves as artists and entrepreneur because every artist is an entrepreneur in some ways. Mm. And I think this is this is so fantastic that you clearly state those two hats you have. And I was wondering how do you blend the two together and what were the biggest challenges or successes by playing these two roles? 
Yeah, I, you know, I think when I started, I mean, I became an entrepreneur kind of by uh, default, you know, I, I didn't ever intend on it. But when I was working at Ableton back in 2008, I got laid off from my job. And they said, you know, we're going to make you a certified trainer. And they uh, basically replaced my job position with this other thing, which um, wasn't a job. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was really sad because I was happy and loved the job and loved the people. And then after that, I thought, well, what am I going to do now? You know, what other mm. company am I going to work for? So I started looking at other companies and I realized I don't want to work for any of these other companies. So I literally started my own company and started consulting for other companies. And that's how I became an entrepreneur. And then, you know, I just always had success at that. I always, you know, met more people and more companies. And, you know, then I started touring and um, then I started growing my businesses to help other people uh, tour and to learn what I, I've uh, learned in a shorter amount of time. You know, it just was natural for me. It was really natural for me to just start to give back, to try to help other people come up um, to provide opportunities for other people and then to also surround myself with people that I love. And, I, you know, that's definitely one of my talents, I think, is um, finding the right people, attracting the right people and giving them opportunities. And then, of course, they support me as well. So I would say, you know, some of the, the those are the, some of the beautiful things about being an entrepreneur, you know, being able to um, handpick the people around me, the, the people that are in my inner circle that I trust, that have my back, I have theirs. As I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm very loyal to my team. Some of the challenges are just not knowing financially sometimes if things are going to work out. You know, I've taken a lot of risks by building, you know, my educational programs and invested a lot of money and have worked with many different business coaches and done a lot of coaching over the years to, you know, build them. And that's not necessarily my joy, you know, uh, it's not. Uh, I like to, to play music, create music and uh, share what I do. But the business aspect of it, I've always kind of struggled with, you know, because yeah. it's like, oh, I don't want to yeah. know about the funnels and how, you know, people get on your email list yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So I've had to like learn about all of that stuff. And it's not necessarily fun uh, for me. Um, yeah. But luckily, I, you know, I've got things to a certain point where, you know, I've hired people to, to jump in on, on the things that I don't love. And then I think the main challenge is just the overseeing of it all. So the more people that you hire, the more that you sort of have to oversee and the more your overhead is. And so, you know, that's constantly like a balance for me is like figuring out, okay, what do we have coming in? You know, talking to my bookkeeper, what can we afford? How, how do we structure this thing? Cause you know, you can structure a business so many different ways and how is this serving me? You know, like when I was growing my company, electronic creatives, before the pandemic, all I was doing was having meetings. It was meetings, 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 meetings. And I wasn't happy, you know, and it was growing and it was growing bigger and I wasn't happy. I didn't love the aspect of growing a business. And now after the, the pandemic now, you know, I've been, uh, I mean, well, it's still going on, but like since things have been opening up a little bit more and, you know, we've been getting more shows I realized, okay, I really just want to keep things smaller right now. I really want to just keep it manageable. I don't want to hire a ton of people and be responsible for them. I just want to just keep it small and simple so that I can focus on what it is that I love. So would you say it's important to recheck uh, regularly what you want yeah. and what's your vision to make sure you don't go completely in a direction that, you know, months later you realize you're totally not where you want to be. Oh yeah. I've done that many times where I've built, you know, <laughs> like now when I, when I have an idea, I stop myself. Mm. <laughs> I stop myself and I really look at the idea. Does this completely align with what I want, you know, with where I'm going. But before I did not stop myself. I just had an idea and I would make it happen. Yeah. Had an idea. Yeah. I would make it happen. And I'm good at that. You know, I'm good at seeing things through. I'm good at, you know, executing and making things happen. But 
Now I just try to look at it through the lens of, is it in my joy? And I actually became a facilitator in something called the Joy Money Matrix last year. And so it's a process to uncover the Venn diagram of what makes you happy, what you're in your joy doing and what makes you money. And so I'm trying to live mostly in that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I encourage anyone, you know, who's listening to this to sit down and and make a list of the things that bring them joy and then also bring them money because the cross section of those things is, is the sweet spot. Yeah, that's super interesting. So talking about giving back, you are also a mentor and an educator, and you created a community and educational program called Transmute. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems that the idea of transferring knowledge, the transfer of knowledge and empowering others is really important to you. Do you want to talk about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, born out of the moment in the hospital was Transmute, you know, and as I was doing my own healing, I decided, you know, I want to help heal others and share my journey and share my passion, both for music and technology, but also wellness and spirituality and self-care. And so I started my Transmute retreat in 2018, and it was in Florida, and about 10 artists were there. And that was kind of my first, the first thing that I, that I tried and from there, I decided to build Transmute Online because I had a lot of artists saying, we want to work with you, but we can't, you know, come to the U.S. or, you know, how can we work with mm. you? So I tr- started the Transmute Accelerator in 2019 um, as a way for artists to come together online. And so I started building out my online business um, in education. And that's been really rewarding and fun because I've gotten to meet many amazing people such as yourself and you know um gotten to work with incredible artists from all over the world and you know i've had that program been shifting and morphing and trying different things over the past couple of years so it's been great and and that's evolved into the transmute academy which is a, a free place for folks to come and learn and i've got a lot of free courses on there uh, we've done a lot of initiatives for women over the years, especially with, you know, Master Track, my playback education program. Uh, so yeah, it's it's just really rewarding. And now in Transmute, there's a lot of women. And when we first started out, there weren't very many. So it's been hmm. really uh, amazing and such a blessing to see uh, more women that feel, are feeling supported by um, our community. Yeah, it is important for you to support young women also to mm-hmm. to raise to the level. And are you associated with uh, Beats by Girls? So I'm, I'm friends with them, and I've you know done some um, presentations and talks and performances for them. So yeah, yeah I'm friends with Aaron Bear, the founder. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love what they're Excellent. doing. Yeah, love it. Cool. You define your music as future classical. And uh, in May, you released your new EP Mm -hmm. called Enoughness. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about this EP a bit? Sure. Yeah. So this EP was born out of uh, this solitary time in the pandemic. And I was going through a lot of health struggles throughout the the past year. And, you know, for for the first six months or so of lockdown, I really was not in a good place. I was not, you know, I think most everyone wasn't, you know, where our lives mm. were upended. My business was completely shut down, Electronic Creatives. It was, you know, yeah. there's no tours. Um, I had to, you know, completely pivot and, and focus on all the online stuff. And I was, you know, giving a lot. I was doing a lot of like free master classes and pushing, pushing, pushing. But um, inside, I kind of was coming to terms with the fact that I had um, been struggling with an eating disorder for 20 years and, you know, being in the music industry and entertainment and definitely a series of events led to me developing this, being misdiagnosed with a reproductive condition when I was 17 and the doctors telling me you have to eat a certain way the rest of your life. And just that the restriction was really affecting me. And so I started to come to terms with this during the pandemic and got help and started working with a therapist and just realized like how I'd been living my life 
under this, you know, this control, trying to be in control of every mm. little aspect. And uh, I had to give myself permission to let go of the control of everything. And yeah. uh, so I did, you know, I, and it was terrifying. It was, you know, the most terrifying thing that I've had to do because I lived my life this certain way forever. And, but once I let go of that control and just allowed myself to eat whatever it is that I wanted, you know, and to listen to my body and, and learn about intuitive eating and my life completely opened up and changed. And so, you know, it's been a beautiful time of healing and I started to write enoughness in the fall sort of after I had done some healing and really again, like part two of my health journey, you know, and uh, this really just centered around this idea that we are all enough. You know, we, mm. a lot of us are taught from an early age, especially, you know, maybe we grew up with parents, maybe not, maybe we, you know, that we had different situations. Maybe yeah. some people didn't care for us in the, in a loving way. And we weren't taught, you know, that we were enough. Um, yeah. And society teaches us that we're not enough because, you know, that we see all these ads, you know, change this, yeah. augment this, look like this, you know, and it's sort of ingrained in us uh, that we need yeah. to be somehow different than we are. And I just found that so profound. And I just really started to focus on feeling like I was enough, feeling like I was good enough, feeling like I'm good enough right now. Uh, as I am right now, I don't need to change anything. And for 20 years, I'd been striving constantly to be different than I was in every aspect of my life. You know, mm. I'm not good enough at the violin. I'm not a good enough singer. I'm not thin enough. You know, I'm not all these things enough, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. so I just decided that I'm just getting rid of it. You know, I'm getting rid of this. I am enough. And I'm going to write these songs to remind myself that I'm enough. So that's how the, the EP was born, really. It was uh, me, uh, my own therapy, my own art art therapy to myself, mm. to, to soothe myself, to remind myself um, to stand in my power. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was really um, powerful for me. Beautiful. It will most likely inspire and power many other women that mm, feel the same way yeah so many of us do yeah it's yeah. unconscious sometimes you know we yeah these tapes that are you know ingrained in us from an early age yeah, yeah. that are looping mm -hmm. right yeah <laughs> it's just a wrong loop it is it is yeah fabulous is there anything else you would like to talk about um, in regards to women in the arts or any messages you would like to bring forward mm. Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you're a woman and you're listening, you just keep going for it, you know, like mm. keep doing your passion, you know, keep like sitting with what it is that brings you joy. And, you know, obviously I know that we have to make money in, in different ways, especially when we're younger. We haven't been able to build to that place where it's all one thing, but even in doing a job or doing work that is not necessarily aligned, find the joy in that. Find certain things about it that can serve your music or your art. Mm -hmm. Join, invest in yourself, you know, join communities, like whether it's a free community or if you can't afford to join things, um, that's a big part of how I started leveling up is, I, you know, I started hiring people and I did, I've done a lot of coaching. I've hired a yeah. lot of coaches. I've invested like lots of money. I don't even know the, the the number, but many, 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 many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching. And I couldn't afford it, you know, when I first started it. But the uh, the return has been exponential. So if you can, yeah. you know, either do free stuff to get to the place where you can invest in coaching, I, I recommend it because feeling supported by a coach has what is led me to build, you know, my businesses and build my brands. But without their support, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I was scared, you know, and you need, mm. sometimes you need someone there holding your hand saying you can do this and helping you figure out 
when you don't know, and sometimes I didn't have the self-awareness when I was younger. So having a, that reflection of mm. someone across from me saying, you can do this. What do you think about this? Does this resonate with you? And then you start to really uncover who it is that you truly are. And when you're living from that authentic place of being who you truly, truly are, then yeah. life is so much easier because you're not having to put on these masks and it's exhausting to have to put on the masks and pretend to be a certain way or try to please other people. And that's really where it's hard for me. I, and I just can't do it anymore. I cannot pretend to be someone that I'm not anymore. Yeah. We often assume that we need to succeed all by ourselves and it's just impossible. We, we all need support. We all need some kind of a support group and people around us that are going to help us push forward and elevate ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah, we need community. We need the support. So if you can find a community that, to support you, like I said, you don't necessarily have to pay for it because there are free com many beautiful free communities out there. Um, but, you know, just finding a, a space that you're held and seen and supported is, you know, amazing for growth. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. As Laura says, she blends music, tech and consciousness together. And she created a beautiful life filled with adventures, creativity and a wonderful community. She says, and I'm quoting, for me, music is the most inclusive space. It gives me full permission to create, be and express myself. I find when I'm deep in musical reflection that I feel the most free and expansive. When I honor the sound that naturally comes through me, I am healed. This is really inspiring. Check out her music, her work, and her inspiring stories of transformation and transmutation. Thank you, Laura. This podcast is supported by Pro Helvetia, the Swiss Arts Council, the Republic and Canton of Geneva, and the city of Lancy in Switzerland. We are so thankful for their support and commitment to women, culture, and the arts. Thanks for listening to Raw and Radical Women in the Arts podcast. Learn more about our featured artists and sign up for news and updates by visiting our website rawradical.com. Please consider leaving us a comment and review on your preferred podcast listening platform to help others discover the show and take part in this global dialogue. She intuitive. I am Maureen Broadbeck, and until next time, keep the dream alive. Woman. Woman.